Well, hello and welcome to Scotland this week. We've decided to come up to Threve Castle, which is just over the border up into Scotland. And as you can see, got here and we've got more of this blooming stuff. Everywhere we go lately, they've got, in Scotland this is, they've got these heritage sites closed off and it's so annoying because as you can see, if I step out the way, the shot is actually right from here. We need to kind of be in on this jetty down here to be able to get the shot of the boat and then the castle in the background, which would work really, really well. But unfortunately, even though the, you can't get to the castle, the only way to get to it is via this boat, they've closed the whole jetty off, which is ridiculous. I mean, you could have still left it open to be able to get shots, you know, it's just, simple really you didn't have to put that there i mean there's already scaffolding on the castle itself but we're just finding this everywhere we go really in scotland at the minute they seem to be doing some sort of survey and it's just they put this stuff everywhere however i think we're gonna have to work around it see what we can find to make it work there might be a couple of shots either left or right where we can get down to this river bank and actually get a clear shot we might not get the boat in the shot i don't know um, it would have been nice to be kind of straight onto the boat and get the reflection of the boat as well. But uh, it is what it is, we've just got to work with what we've got. So we're going to start off here today. There's a few areas around here that might work really well. As you can see, I really like the fact that although it's quite bright and it's sunny today, we have got a lot of cloud and that's going to add drama to the scenes that we're shooting as well. Going to shoot this area first and then move further towards the coast, I think, because there's a lighthouse I want to check out, which is a, a Southern S lighthouse, which might be worth a look. And I think that's one of those lo locations that's going to be very dependent on whether the tide's in or out. Um, if the tide's out, it's going to be quite messy, I would imagine, to be able to do anything with, but we'll just have to see what we have. This is what kind of happens when I come out to shoot, really. I'm, I'm limited to the days I can get out, and we just have to work with what we've got at that time. Anyhow, I'm going to get into this shot, see what I can line up and then get you to the back of the camera when I get set up. Right guys, so hopefully I've got this first shot kind of lined up. I just want to take you to the back of the camera and walk you through it. So what you should see is I've, I've selected a strip panel and the reason is we've got trees either side here and they're interfering quite a bit with the, with the rest of the scene. So in, in order to simplify it, I want that strip panel We've got the river down in the foreground down here, and this is up on the path level, as you can see here. Looking down on the river with the castle on in that middle island, we've got the boat off to the right. There's a couple of things I don't like about it, and what I want to do from this point is actually show you what the image looks like from here, and then I'm going to move around into two or three different locations and show you how I adjust my compositions to make it work better for an image. So I like this. As it is up here, there's a couple of things I don't like though, and I want to point those out to you now. So I love the uh, the aspect ratio of the image. I've got the castle off to the left, as you can see there. I've got the boat down in the bottom right. Now, the thing I don't like from this kind of vantage point is basically you're looking down on the boat and there's a bush off to the right here, and that's kind of getting in the way of the boat. So it's kind of blanking it off a little bit, and I'm not too keen on that to be honest those branches are intersecting with the boat so i think what i'll do is is get an, another location further down to kind of try and simplify that and get that those trees off the boat and make it a cleaner image but i'll show you the rest of this one first we've got those clouds off in the distance obviously there's a bit of blue sky peeking through there but the clouds are moving through so it's definitely a question of waiting for the right point to take an image there's some nice light hitting the castle now as well, so it's also a case of waiting till the clouds move out of the way behind you to either you know, light the castle up or to, to get rid of a bit more of that light if it's too much. But you've got the, those options there to play with. I've kind of centered the land itself where the castle is in the middle of the frame there. I'll just bring that up again because it just disappeared because I haven't done anything. Is it coming back up? There we go. So as you can see, that stripper lands in the middle of the frame. We've got the water and the boat along the lower section of the frame. And then the castle and the clouds are kind of intersecting that top um, third, just along the top there and getting those clouds in. Now I'm underexposing by one or two stops because as, as you can see, it's quite bright, um, near a one stop actually at the moment. 
ISO 100, F16 at an 80th of a second. We haven't got any wind, so that's not an issue. The other thing that I do like and forgot to point out to you actually is the fact that we've getting nice reflections on the water itself. But as you can see, maybe at the moment, there's a little bit of wind blowing in from the right just on the water and it's just kind of making those reflections disappear. So we're either gonna have to do one or two things. We're either gonna have to be patient and uh, wait for that wind on the water to die down and smooth out, or we're gonna have to put an ND filter on there and do a longer exposure and try and smooth it out that way. But I'll show you this shot first on screen, grab the shot, and then we'll move on and I'll show you the next one. Right guys, so I've moved down a little lower off this path now. And the idea is, I'll just press record now so you can see. Now you'll see from where I was before, with moving down this little section of bank here, I've actually eliminated the bushes that were off to the right hand side over here. And that makes a massive difference to the shot. It makes it a lot cleaner. Now obviously I've, I've left the castle where it was almost. I've got the water in the boat in that lower third almost um, and the the land and the castle is in the, in the middle third and then top third again sky and it's a case of again waiting for that light to either illuminate the castle and illuminate my foreground which is going to be the boat and what have you now and also the issue we've got again because there's no wind actually hitting the grass itself so much it's more actually on the water which is rippling the surface there and in turn with what's happening is, is that boat is actually turning in the water as well. So the problem you're gonna have with a long exposure and trying to smooth the, this out for reflections is you're probably gonna to have to do two shots. One shot to actually freeze the boat from moving and another shot to actually give the, uh, the water a nice smooth finish. But it's sometimes just easier to actually wait and give yourself a little bit of time and see what happens. The wind is kind of settling down every now and then, so I could probably grab a shot and get it all in one rather than having to blend images together. But uh, yeah, it's just a case of waiting. And then the, and the other thing is, as well is, is that boat might turn into the wrong position. If it's facing away from you, or you're only gonna get the back of the boat and it's not actually gonna add too much to the frame. So it's a case of giving yourself time for that boat to actually turn back into the frame and be in the position that you want to, to actually make it work. So I'm gonna hang around here, hopefully wait for this uh, wind to die down slightly and get a bit more of a reflection on the water. Wait for this boat to move into position and then I'll grab that shot. So what I've got is these flowers in the foreground down here, these pink ones. Now what I'm gonna to have to do, because I'm so close, is I've put a wide angle lens on and I've changed my um, aspect ratio to actually a 16 by nine and that's so I can incorporate more of the flowers in the foreground. I've got the boat in the kind of middle section of the image again and the castle in the sky often almost in the top. The castle's just peeking up over that top third and I've got more of the sky in. I'm underexposing again because I'm trying to keep as much detail in those clouds as possible. Because we've got blue sky and that really bright white clouds, I want to retain as much detail as possible. The thing I'm going to have to do here though is because I'm so close to the foreground element, I mean I'm about, what, about three foot away from those, I want to be sure that, they're not, that everything's going to be in focus. So what I'm going to do is take a shot for those flowers, like that, you can see the focus point was on those flowers. And then I'm gonna move up and take one for the boat. Grab that shot. I'm gonna move across, take one for where the castle is. And then I'm gonna take another one in the top section of the image for the sky just reduce the exposure again on that slightly just to keep it from blowing out 
and then at least I've got all that information. I might not need it, but I, now I've got it. And I'll just actually take a picture of my hand as well, just to signify that's the end of my focus stack. And then I'm gonna take a normal shot where I kind of think it should work, just underexposing. As I say, I can probably get away with it. I might get away with it just in one shot, but at least now I've got all that information so that I don't get home and think, ah, I wish I'd focus stacked that and then I can put all those together and actually get a nice clear shot. So guys, we kind of went down to the coast and looked at the lighthouse down at Southern S Point there. And I'll pop a phone picture of it up now so you can kind of see what we're looking at. And a couple of the problems we had there, number one, the tide was too low to actually submerge the lower half of the lighthouse itself. And the other part of it was, it was so busy because it's so, so near to a kind of holiday resort there. There was just people everywhere and even even if we'd kind of tried to make it work, there would have been so much cloning out to do with people and uh, kids and everything playing down there. There was just lots of elements that really weren't gonna work for us. So we've kind of headed further off now. We've been traveling around a bit to try and find another subject to photograph. We're currently at a place called Loch Ken. So we're gonna kind of have another little bit of a scout around this area, see if there's something else to shoot. And then I'll kind of walk you through that when we find something. But beautiful place to spend a few hours anyway but nothing here that's worth photographing so we're going to move on and i'll catch up with you in a bit right guys so just on our way back down now we're kind of heading away from Loch ken there's some beautiful mountains over in the distance there well hills probably but um, as you can see there's lots of kind of trees off in the distance there oh, well i'll make sure you can see for a start i'll press record on here Right, so as you can see in the lowest section of the frame, if I zoom out, let me just look through there. You can see if I zoom out, you can see those trees in that lower part of the frame. Now, I could leave those in, but I, on, with this shot, what I'm going to do is take them out completely. So I'm zooming right into 200 mil. And, well, almost into 200 mil there. And you can see how moody and dramatic those hills in the distance look. Now I'm using that really dramatic cloud above it, underexposing by one stop. I'm at uh, ISO 100, F16 at 1 60th of a second. And I'm just grabbing the shot when the light changes on those distant hills there. Now what I like about this is the fact that it's a really simple shot. It just caught my attention because of the cloud above it. I was hoping that there was gonna be a little bit more in the foreground but actually if I'm zooming right into those hills back there there's enough drama in that sky back there to actually hold the image together so I've got kind of almost half and half so there's half of the image is taken up with those hills and the light that's touching them and then the other half of the image is actually sky now obviously I've gone for the strip pano with this and if I went any wider you're going to get more of those trees in the shot so that's the reason why I've actually gone for the pano this time is to eliminate any distractions from the bottom at all. It's just a really simple shot. All that I want the viewer to be able to see is the drama in the sky 
and the dark hills and it's just got a real sort of mood about the image so i'm going to grab this shot as soon as i get a little bit more light on those hills and i'll pop it up for you next So I just want to show you the reason why I went for the strip pano on this. If I show you the back of the camera, what you'll see, this is the 4x3, and you'll see I've got those trees in the lower section of the image now, but I've also got that wall. And the problem with that wall is it's leading from the, the left bottom corner to the right of that lower third. And to my eye, looking at it, it's actually leading you nowhere. So your eyes following along that wall, expecting it to lead you into something and there's nothing to lead you into. The main point of focus for me is those hills, which are dark and broody in the, in the background. And then you've got that dramatic sky. So for me, there's nothing in the foreground that stands out to in, of interest. So that's why I went for that strip panel because it eliminates all this distraction of the lower section of the image and focuses the viewer's attention on the main point of focus, which is the sky and those dramatic hills in the distance. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this week's video, guys, and it's shown you how I compose my images to get the best shot I possibly can. It's all about taking your time and spending that time looking around the area to see how you could best compose your shot to make the best image possible, really. It's all about these little micro adjustments moving lower down a bank like we did this morning there, or further down still to get more of a foreground in, or just making a, a decision that means that you adjust your crop to eliminate distractions in an image and just simplify it really. Thanks very much for watching guys. I'll see you on the next video soon. Take care, bye bye.